Hello, I'm Greg Lamb with the Sleater Group. In this video, I'm going to review GoDaddy bookkeeping software. It used to be called Outright until GoDaddy bought them a few years back. When I review accounting software, I always check to see if they have the accounting basics, which are accrual accounting, good control over the chart of accounts, and the ability to create journal entries. GoDaddy doesn't have any of this. What does this mean for small business owners? It means you can't fully use it to accurately produce profit and loss and balance sheet reports. So you might be wondering, if it can't do that, why use it? Well, it can track income and expenses on a cash basis and should do a better job than spreadsheets. So while it's not true accounting software, it may be used as decent income and expense tracking software. It also has some good integrations with e-commerce sites like eBay, Amazon, and Etsy. So if you sell primarily using those sites, GoDaddy may be a good fit. All right, let me take you on a tour and show you what GoDaddy is like. To start off, this is the overview page where you'll get a smattering of your business reports and account activity. Navigation is fairly simple with the main menu items laid out across the top. The pages you'll probably end up using the most are the income and expenses pages. So let's check those out, starting with income. GoDaddy tries to automatically categorize all transactions, so theoretically, you wouldn't need to edit any of these transactions since they are brought in directly from your online banking and categorized by GoDaddy. In reality, the automation won't always work, so you'll need to manually go through them and make sure the transactions are correct. Editing is quite easy. All you need to do is click on a transaction and you'll be able to change the category, add an attachment, and split the transaction if you want. If you do change some things up, GoDaddy will offer to apply the same logic to other similar transactions, both in the future and in the past. This can be a huge time saver, but it does present the ability to screw up many transactions at once, so be careful. Another way to edit many transactions at a time is to click on Edit Multiple and do just that. If you haven't noticed, the only way to collect tax on income is to split a transaction into two. One transaction will record the sales income and the other the sales tax collected. I don't think this is a particularly clean way of doing this, especially since you won't be able to match up the split transactions to ones found in your bank account statement. For example, GoDaddy would show a transaction for $2 and another for 19 cents, while your bank account would show a single transaction for $2.19. This makes it very hard to verify that what's in your bank account matches the transaction found in GoDaddy. You may have noticed that there's tabs for business and non-business. If we check out the transactions in the non-business tab and see how they are categorized, they are indeed what most would consider business transactions. But it's just that they are transactions that don't fall under income or expenses. In other words, asset, liability, and equity transactions fall into this non-business category. So if you're doing things like making owner contributions or depositing funds from a loan, they'll show up in this non-business tab. Over on the expenses page, things work largely the same as on the income page. However, there are a few more tabs to be found. You have business, uncategorized, mileage, and non-business. I don't know why the expenses has an uncategorized tab and the income page doesn't, but once you categorize a transaction, it'll either go to the business or non-business tab. Let's move on to the invoices page. GoDaddy's invoices are fairly built out and give you the ability to create estimates, make them reoccur, collect online payments, and bill for time and expenses. Attachments can be added and various templates used. So there's a good amount of invoicing functionality. Something to note for those used to dealing with online accounting software is that if you use items, you'll notice that it doesn't have any accounts or categories associated with them. This is because all the items are categorized to a general invoice income account. Sales taxes are also a bit different, since instead of choosing from a list of tax rates, you enter your own tax name and rate each time you create an invoice. When you go to send the invoice to your customer, the experience is pleasant on both ends. There's a default email message that you can tweak, and the customer receives an email with a link to pay the invoice. It has a modern design, and everything is simple and friendly. If you send a quote, there's even the ability for the customer to accept the quote online. Once a customer pays for an invoice, that's where things are handled a bit differently than what you'd expect if you're an accountant or bookkeeper. Since GoDaddy is cash accounting, 
invoices are not counted as income until they are paid. So when the payment does come through, it goes onto the income page as a transaction categorized as invoice income. And since the invoice I was using had taxes, the entries actually split into two, one for the income and one for the tax. In GoDaddy's framework, it all makes sense, but I did want to point this out to people who have used accountant software before, since this may be behavior that you're not used to. Let me pop on over to reports now. Reporting is about as good as to be expected from software that only tracks income and expenses. Here's a little tip. Please be aware that you can click on table to view all the details of a report. Now on to taxes. The tax page is a bit unique since it's geared towards Schedule C filing. If all your data in GoDaddy is accurate, and that's a big if since there's no reconciliation functionality nor are there asset liability and equity accounts, you can access a Schedule C worksheet. The limitations are actually easy to find if you scroll on down to the bottom and peruse the Good to Know section. I'm glad GoDaddy provides this as they obviously know that there's probably some holes in the data that needs to be addressed. Let me move on over to sales taxes. Sales tax filing is fairly basic. You see the taxes collected and you record a payment. If you're dealing with multiple agencies, this probably won't work so well. But if you only have a single tax authority to report to, it can suffice. Be warned that when you go to record a payment, it's considered an expense. This actually works out mathematically since sales tax collected is considered income. So in the end, the difference between the tax collected and paid should be zero. One area that I always make sure to check is the help. The support articles seem to be sufficient, but using the search isn't too helpful since it pulls up a lot of community results instead of knowledge base articles. There's a ticket and system that can be used for support. I actually had problems with my sign up, so when I called the general GoDaddy support, there wasn't actually a menu option to contact GoDaddy Bookkeeping. The last feature I'll talk about is mobile. GoDaddy has apps for both Android and iOS that mirrors most of the functionality of the web app, so you should be able to get good use out of them on the go. To wrap things up, GoDaddy may very well work for a specific subset of businesses who need a simple way to track their business income and expenses on a cash basis. I'm not a fan of GoDaddy's marketing about how small business owners can do it themselves, since while technically they can, the reality is that they'll be making lots of mistakes. For accountant professionals, there's no accountant program or accountant logins, so this is really not geared towards accountants. There are definite limitations to what the software can do, but if you go in understanding them, I do think it can be used for very small businesses. It can even act as a data collection tool for accountants who have clients who provide them only spreadsheets or piles of receipts. The data won't be 100% accurate, but it'll probably be more reliable and better organized than if the owner didn't use online accounting software. That's it for this review. For more videos like this, please subscribe to the Sleater Group YouTube channel. I'm Greg Lamb with the Sleater Group, and I'll catch you on the flip side.